one Clydesdale can pull 6,000 tons. So how many can two Clydesdale pull? You would think that it's 12,000, right? Well, it's 36,000 tons two Clydesdale can pull. One can pull 6,000, two can pull 36,000. That's the power of a force multiplying relationship. So what I typically see in people in small businesses is that if they're hitting their ceiling and they're, they're missing a relationship and then they go, well, I don't have the money to fund it. Well, then that's because you increased your lifestyle instead of increase your business. Hey, Masters, welcome to another episode of Path to Mastery. And today we are with Mr. Adam Hergenrother. What's up, Adam? Hey, how are you doing, buddy? I'm doing well, man. How are you today? Well, fantastic. We're alive and it's snowing. I mean, what else can we ask for, right? Yeah, man, it was fun. I was chipping away at the ice this morning. Our cars were a complete ice. It was uh, pretty neat, actually. Yeah, that's awesome. You know? Yeah, man. Well, thanks for uh, spending some time with us today. And, you know, I was looking at the uh, bio you guys sent me and I kind of forgot how many uh, different things you're actually <laughs> doing, yeah, man. I, so I, I forget sometimes, I dude, David. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, Jesus, holy cow, dude. Yeah. A little bit about you, and then you can fill in some gaps, and we'll just have a conversation today. How's that? Sounds great. I know before we started recording, we're like, well, what are we going to talk about? And I'm like, yeah, yeah well, just so many different things. We'll, yes, we'll figure it out, right? Yeah. So uh, you are the founder and CEO of Adam Hergenrother Companies, which includes KW Vermont, Hergenrother Realty Group, BlackRock Construction, Adam Hergenrother Training, and Adam Hergenrother Foundation. Wow. You've built a $1 billion organization in less than 10 years by creating a culture where personal growth and work-life integration come first. I love that. You thrive on physical challenges, including Bikram yoga, hiking, Ironman races, which you got me into, <laughs> um, whitewater rafting, skiing, so much more. And man, it uh, fills your mind with 40 minutes a day of meditation, which is also something I picked up from you. So thank you for that gift as well. We can even talk a little bit about that oh, today. That, that's, that's a great conversation. I believe uh, all of this is simple, but not easy. I love that quote, you know, old Jim Rohn, yeah. simple, not easy, right? This isn't complicated stuff. It's just about showing up every day, which is the hard part. And then uh, taking your business to the next level. Business building is hard. You know, what's really fascinating about David, about, um, kind of when you said it's simple, not easy, and we overcomplicate things. Part of this, I believe, stems from whether this is in business, whether this is in sports, or whether this is in your spiritual growth. We think we know what we're going through something, but then once we actually go through it, we then realize how simple it was and how much we actually didn't know. And so you're always on that path of the circular travel, meaning that wherever you are in a stage, you think you know something while you're going through it. And you don't really experience it though until you get all the way through it. And then you look back on it and you go, it's actually much simpler than that. I don't know why I fought this whole thing. And then you fast forward to where you are now and you go, well, I know what I know now, but then you get through the next evolution and you go, I didn't really know that. And now look how simple it was. I like to use this. If you look at things about this in the business terms, people use the word talent, right? And I always say that people only know the highest level of talent based on the highest level of talent they had ever led. Because talent is a word that's ubiquitous and it's thrown out everywhere, right? And so people are like, oh, I hired this talented person. Well, they're talent in your world because you've never hired anybody. So hiring anybody is talent, right? To a certain extent. Then you hire somebody else and you go, man, David, man, this guy's real talent, right? And then a couple of years later, you hire somebody else and you're like, holy mackerel, like this is a really talented individual. So I just use it as an example so you can grasp in your head that subtlety of the communication there is that you really only know something when you actually experience all of it. It's like reading the menu and mistaking it for the meal. You have to be able to read and eat the meal before you can actually experience the words on the meal to be able to describe mm. it yourself. I mean, how do you quench somebody's thirst by describing it to them? So really the experience of building a business, the experience of going through Ironmans, the experience of taking adventure sports, the experience of the inward journey is in itself the depth of experience you can gain from life. And so when you understand that, then you just start applying this to every aspect of your life and you wake up and say, give me the depth of experience so I'm no longer reading it from a menu and I'm actually experiencing it. What causes people to not want to experience it is their preferences. People go, what? The cause of this is your preferences because if you think about it from a very easy standpoint, every single day, 99.99999% carry the decimal place out of 1,000 
events happen every day that don't bother you, right? Like the tree out in front of my house isn't bothering you. The rings on Saturn aren't bothering you. The, the birds that are sleeping in Mexico aren't bothering you. There's so many things that aren't bothering you. They just go on this flow of life. Then what happens is we try to pick like three things that if we don't get what we want or we get what we don't want, we make them personal and we bother them. If you want, we can go in that kind of that deep journey conversation of why that is. But just right there, people should pause and go, why does the world have to be the way I want it to in order for me to have joy or enthusiasm or love all the time, right? Why does it? And instead of just, wow, business is this amazing event. Every day, it's like Christmas. Things are coming in. There's challenges every day. And just, this is awesome. They're not problems, they're events. They're only problems because you don't want them. Hey, Masters, welcome to another episode of Path to Mastery. Listen, we had Adam Hargamatha with us today. Great episode. Uh, yeah, we were uh, just, <laughs> we're all over the place and it's all awesome, my friends. Uh, Adam talks about spirituality, about business, about aligning yourself with the right talent, about time. I mean, just this guy's uber successful. He runs a billion dollar business. If you don't know who he is, for the people of you that don't, just a great interview, man. I had a lot of fun talking to Adam. And, you know, after you listen to this, go check out some of his resources on our show notes. So, again, enjoy Adam. Great, great conversation on time. Um, I would also love to hear some of your thoughts and some of your feedback. So, feel free to shoot me an email if you like and give me some feedback on what you thought of the interview. Um, also, if you have other people that you think I should have on the show. We'd love to hear from you as well. I know a few of you have reached out to me and I appreciate that. My email is david at davidihill.com. Okay. Also, don't forget about our sponsors, Vulcan 7, my friend. Vulcan 7 has been supporting us for a long time. Um, they have tremendous data, dialer, uh, everything you need, CRM for calling, cold calling. Uh, use them as, uh, if you want, use them as a, a CRM for your database. Expired, Fizbo's for your realtors. Just a, a great tool. And you got a special opportunity with us with Vulcan7.com forward slash path to mastery. You can try out their services for only 49 bucks for two weeks. Great opportunity to try it out. And if you love it, keep moving. And finally, uh, don't forget to get a free copy of Adam's book, The Founder and a Force Multiplier, David's free book.com. Again, davidsfreebook.com. Get yourself a free copy of the book. My friends, you rock and listen. Enjoy Adam Hergeroth. You said a lot. I think a lot of people, they are where they are. You know, it's their world. It's their thoughts. Uh, you know, you started off by saying, you know, you think you know something, but you don't really know it until you... you so, I mean, let's unpack that a little bit, yeah. right? Because it's, like you said, somebody's super talented until you've actually met somebody that's really talented, right? So how do people get to that place? I mean, is it wisdom? Like, what is that? Two things. One, my definition of wisdom is applying somebody else's knowledge before you experience it. Because once you experience it, it's not your wisdom, right? It's your wisdom now. But wisdom is really applying a model or a system or a tool in your life before you've actually experienced it. Because once you experience it, you now have wisdom over it, right? Once you've done a podcast, you've got experience doing it. Before you do it, you rely on somebody else's information or help or techniques to do it, right? Before you, you did your first Ironman, David, right, you were relying on other people to kind of tell you what to do and there's more nervousness and you've kind of prepared for it. Yeah, Once you do true. it, now you have your own experience with it. And so you can share. Sure, you can get more experiences and the depth of experience, but that's wisdom in itself, right? If people could really hear that of just applying something in there instead of getting in their own way. When we talk about going back to the first line that we talked about, which is it's actually simple. So, it's simple if you allow wisdom into your life. So what, listening to that, what, what occurred to me is, so let's look at the Iron Man as an example, even business. So we'll use the real estate business. What a lot of us will do is we'll get into the business and we'll go talk to somebody that's maybe closing 10 houses a year and we're going to get all of our, our information and wisdom from that person. And that's our starting basis where if we would have went to somebody that, like same thing with Iron Man, right? If you talk to somebody that's done 10 Iron Man, they're going to give you a lot different advice than somebody who's done... Uh, an Olympic or something, right? Yeah. So how much value in that is in where we start, right? Because it's a starting point, right? So we should be starting, like you should be talking to Gary Keller if you can, 
mm -hmm. about how to build your real estate business as soon as you get licensed instead of talking to the guy that closed 10 houses last year. Yeah, and if you want to understand how to invest your money, you should be going to Warren Buffett, right? You shouldn't be going to anybody mm -hmm. else, right? A great example of that, because we've been talking about a little bit of Ironmans, is one of my really good friends had a coach. His coach basically was setting him up, and I had a different coach who trained like more professional athletes. I'm certainly not one, but he started training more professional athletes, and so I, I chose him. And the volume of training that we, we saw in a week just differed a lot. The strategies, the training, all those different things. Then he, we both went out and raced, and I beat him by, I don't know, a lot, right? And he goes, man, like something's going wrong. He changed to my coach. Then like seven months later, it's not like he got much better either. He just, he, seven months later, he went and raced against his old coach and beat him. Then his coach came up to him and said, dude, like, what have you done? He goes, no, nah, I just changed my coach. And so that's kind of right. That's the whole plan is, is who are you getting your information from? Who's mm -hmm. the credible source that's providing this to you? Have they actually experienced it themselves? Because that provides you a roadmap and it changes your thinking to what the activity is that you do each day, which then produces the result. You bring it back to the most fundamental aspect of what do you do each day translates into your overarching results that show up in your life. That's that geometric growth. But make sure that you're following a path from somebody who's getting the result that you want in your life. And I don't just mean, you know, you can have different people. If you want somebody, like you said, in real estate, it should be Gary Keller, right? If it's investing, it should be Warren Buffett. It's physical. Find somebody that has a ton of energy and follow what they're doing, right? You can do all of these things in relationships. Find somebody who's a great relationship in spirituality. Who is that person you want to follow? Then bring that wisdom into your life and apply that every day. So why don't more people start at that level? Why does everybody start at, or do we even inherently know that we're supposed to do that, right? I mean, most people. No. Yeah, well, I think fear. And I also think people get in their own way and think that they can do it either better and or they just don't know it's an option. They're taking what's there instead of seeking out the best advisors. You ever remember when Warren Buffett first started investing? Would well, you remember what he did when he, when he was, before he even got with Robert Graham? He went and read that book 10 times before he invested in anything. And I don't know if you ever picked up Robert Graham's book that he read, that Warren Buffett read. It's as thick as like the dictionary. I mean, you read like seven lines in it and you got to put it down because your head is just going there. Warren Buffett sat mm. there and read it 10 times before he did one investment. Warren just went out there and found the top guy doing the top investing and memorized it and ingrained it in himself before he did one action in his day. Mm. That's just a powerful lesson, right? Yeah. So where do you want to go with this conversation? I mean, because there's so many things. You, you got the book. You know, it's funny. I actually thought this was podcast was going to be about the book. And then I looked at the notes and said, oh, okay, where you, you have a new podcast. <laughs> yeah, we're jumping, we're jumping yeah we, let's jump into both those. So, I mean, uh, the book is um, the Founder Force Multiplier has kind of exceeded our expectations. It's been a number one bestseller. Like audio book is fantastic, yeah. by the way. Great oh, job on that. Thanks. I mean, actually, it's funny. Jay Papazin came up to Hallie and was like, you know, my EA that I hired, came from your book and they Google how to be a chief of staff. They found the book, they read it and they applied for my job. And so it's wow. pretty funny to let you know that your book is serving people to get in all different, it was just funny how that connection was made that way. Right. Yeah. Actually today I'm going and I'm touring the new F 35 plane from the air base. I'm bringing my kids to it. And how we got into that was the chief commander of all of 1400 employees that are there read our book, the founder and force multiplier, and then started giving it out to all of his people in the military. David, you had an experience of hearing him at Project U, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And for He's Darren awesome. um, to, Dar to yep. be there. And that's how he connected with us because of our book. It's a great way of kind of laying out what a force multiplier looks like. We use it in a particular context where a force multiplier with like an EA, personal assistant, chief of staff, like a chief of chaos, or the word is with like a manager, a visionary, a CEO, an owner, you're bringing in a force multiplying relationship. People have now used it in extensions of, you know, a force multiplier can be your COO, your force multiplier can be your CFO, which is true. It's just basically saying that there's a relationship that happens between somebody who is more of the visionary mind, somebody who's more of the leader, somebody who's more doing that, to somebody who is bringing and actually executing on the vision itself, whether it's executing through people, if it's a larger organization, or executing on the actual data, but it's a leadership position. There's a lot of people that came in and said, hey, I want to be an EA, I want to be a chief of staff, and I want to do this for life. But it doesn't feel like a leadership position. It's been treated kind of non-dominant, right? Like kind of like a lesser position, if you will. We've mm. seen EAs getting coffee for people and all these different things. That's, that's fine. That's part of the job. But it's really a leadership role. 
It's really combining two people doing one project, but just different pieces of it. One of the principles that Hallie and I talk about in the book is kind of like the zero to 10 principle where like a owner or a, a leader or a manager, right, is in this position and they take something from like a zero to a one, right? That's kind of where I take it. And then the force multiplier takes from like a two to a nine. And then from a nine to a 10 is giving it back over to either another team if it's a large or back to the original owner. So then they can take it, present it in a presentation. They can take it and then distribute it to the rest of the company, take it to distribute to a client where they're good at. And so you're staying in your strength zones, working on the same project, but really understanding that is a leadership role and how fundamental it is to everybody having that force multiplier next to them to force multiply their life. You know, one Clydesdale, this is just it's kind of a fun stat. You can use it for your dinner tonight if you're listening to this, right? One Clydesdale can pull 6,000 tons. So how many can two Clydesdale pull? You would think that it's 12,000, right? Well, it's 36,000 tons two Clydesdale can pull. One can pull 6,000, two can pull 36,000. That's a force multiplying relationship where one plus one doesn't equal two. One plus one equals four or five, or in this case, one Clydesdale and two Clydesdale now pull four times the amount because there's two people there. That's the power of a force multiplying relationship. I can't believe a, a one Clydesdale can pull that, that much weight. Exactly. Have you ever seen those things? That's They're insane. Massive. Yeah. 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 And actually, no, I haven't seen one in, in yeah. real life. Just on the Bud commercials. Seriously, so let's talk because you, you've got obviously a lot of things going on. You're super successful. Would you be as successful if you didn't have someone like Hallie in your life? No way. So, There's not a chance in the hell. And we've even gotten to the point where we have, you know, Hallie is the chief of staff and we have an EA, Amy, which you've met a bunch of times, who now is with really Amy's chief of staff is Hallie. Amy's the EA. Really, Amy was a hire for Hallie. Yes, it's, it's affecting me, but it gave Hallie the opportunity to give off about 50% of what her job was so she could go be more into a higher level leadership, more strategic thinking. And now what we're doing is additional force multipliers in our life. We are hiring an actual true personal assistant that's a leverage for Amy, the EA. So then you have the kind of full suite of this is the personal assistant, the EA, and the chief of staff, all supporting essentially me, but they're also providing leverage so that now Amy's going to be taking more of the business side, HR stuff, just some other logistical components. She's actually playing a much bigger role in Project U because we have a big class for next year. We were getting stuff off of her plate and a lot of that is personal. So then what we did is we hired a personal assistant for this so that now each one of them has their own force multipliers. And so now the team can operate in sync with each one of them having their own force multiplier so we can all go out there and accomplish more together. So you're going to hit the limit of your achievement by yourself. And then you bring on Hallie and then you and Hallie are going to hit another ceiling, right? Of this is as much as we can achieve. Now you got to go and you got to find somebody that's going to help multiply that, right? And that's where Amy comes. Is that accurate? Exactly. 100%, dude. And you just keep growing like that, right? And people hear this and we talk about it within like a minute or two, but understand this has been 17 years in the making. So people need mm. to understand that's a long time. I mean, I had one EA from basically when I started in real estate in 2006 to basically 2009. So three years and really I just, it was one hire. That's why all I had. At year three, it was we brought out a Howie and I still had a, an EA and, and that's when we ended up with two people and I've kind of moved forward from there. But it was three years having one employee. So just understand that. Like, What's the biggest challenge, that? Adam? When people listen into this, some people may be extremely successful. They're at their capacity. What's going to be their biggest challenge? One of two things. So what I typically see in people in small businesses is that if they're hitting their ceiling and they're, they're missing a relationship and then they go, well, I don't have the money to fund it. Well, then that's because you've increased your lifestyle instead of increase your business. And that's the secondary thing that I always see is people don't have any extra money left over to invest into them because they're spending it because they, they may went from 50 grand to hundred grand to making 200 grand or 300 grand. Right. But now they're living a lifestyle on 200 grand and they're paying hundred thousand dollars in taxes. So there's really not much left over to invest back into people. And they go, what they're really saying is, David, I'm unwilling to adjust to my current lifestyle in order to actually put money back into a person. I can see that. I also feel like it's part of it is if you don't have the right person, it becomes a time issue. Like I don't have time to hire this person, train this person. I think that's a part of it as well, right? That the time it takes, the energy to find the right person. Is there a lot of that as well? Like some people say, I just do it myself. I don't have time for this, right? 
Yeah, you're spot on. I mean, we could sit here and probably go over four or five different major components. I think the money thing is a big one. I think naturally people go, well, David, what would they do? I don't even have time to train somebody. I don't know what they even do or any of those different things, right? Understanding the money side, though, when you're first starting out, I made a lot of hires in a lot of different companies early on in my life. I had no idea how I was going to pay for them. People are shocked to hear that. Most business owners are sitting around and when they make a $70,000 hire, it's not like they have a hundred grand sitting in their bank account. Understand mm. that. I remember one of the actually the number one agent in the state of Vermont now is in the market center. I love him. He's one of my dear friends. He came over as a buyer's agent, and I made him hire his first VA. He goes, "Dude, I've got eight thousand dollars in my pocket right now." And literally, he was like in there. And I said, well, "Now you're forced to go out there and make some more money, <laughs> right?" And now he's much more advanced than that now because he just made that thing. So part of it is you can't allow the fear to paralyze you, which is understanding the experience of it all. So yes, nobody has time. It's also why you have to make time. If you want to gain time back as an individual owner, you've got to be able to leverage to somebody, which means you have to go out there and be purposeful on your hiring, which is also why in the book, in the Founder and Force Multiplier, we talk a lot about, David, what is it that you really need? What is it that you act, do you really need an EA or is it more of a director of sales or is it a chief of staff or is it a operations person or is it a personal assistant, right? You know, one of my good friends, his, one of his first hires was an actual personal assistant, that then allowed him to just clean up all of the stuff over there. He hired a personal assistant who's been with him for a tremendous period of time now and has amplified his life or force multiplied his life because of the personal assistant. That was his biggest crux. In the book, we just talk about what is it that you really, really need? And then you get clear on that and then go hire the person that's going to best fit with the highest probability of supporting you in the role that you can do to have the biggest impact on your life and on your client's life. I love it, man. So I want to switch gears. Everybody, seriously, go check out these guys' book on Audible. The Audible version is amazing. Yeah. As a matter of fact, you can get a free copy. Go to davidsfreebook.com. Check it out. You guys, like I said, fantastic job. I want to jump into what you, you know, with your podcast, Business Meets Spirituality. But what you just talked about with time, you know, I, I feel like that's one of the biggest challenges. I was recently listening to somebody, um, a book called The Big Leap. Have you, have you read that book yet? Really, really good. Cool. One of the things he talks about, which I think, you know, I've heard this from you as well, is it's not really that we don't have time. It's just that it isn't important enough for us, right? Because people will kind of use that as an excuse, like, oh, I don't have time for that. But what they're really saying, Adam, is no, that's just not a priority to me, right? So how, how does that fit into everything we're talking about right now? Well, you're spot on. I mean, it's, we all have 24 hours in a day and we can do anything with all their time. I mean, it's the fact true. that when you have kids, right, David? And you could yeah. tomorrow just get rid of all of your responsibilities and go lie on a park bench. I'm not saying you should do that, but anybody just has options with time. Nobody's time isn't constricting you. What you're doing is you're constricting what you do with your time. In my experience in this is that most people are spending about 50% of their week in the work week. It doesn't even matter. It just really doesn't matter. And they go, I don't have any time. I'm like, the reason why I don't have any time is because you're doing 50% of stuff that doesn't matter. You're in meetings that don't matter. You're having meetings that aren't moving the business forward. And people get lost and like, well, what does matter to me? I'm saying like, you should be so clear on the one or two things you need to get done that week. Then you just let everything else go. Building a mm. business, building a big life is extremely messy. And it requires you to say no to a bunch of other things. I break it down a lot of times where it's like the zero to 10 kind of thing. And it's like a lot of business owners, they start if zero to 10 was like a return where zero means that you're not getting any return. 10 means that you're getting the best return that you can on the, where you are at in your life, right? People don't teach in classes how to make decisions. So you go into it and you go, it's very easy. If I said, David, Hey, I'm going to sell you a monster truck. And you're like, you're like, I'm, it's, you're like, it's a great deal. You're like, well, I don't need a monster truck. I'm just not going to buy it, right? So it's easy. And you go, look, I'm good at making decisions. I said no, right? We trick ourselves with thinking that we're actually really good at saying no. But the reality is we're terrible. We say no to things that are so blatantly obvious <laughs> that, or that are going to lose money or that we just don't want to do. Hey, you want to come to uh, the North Pole with me? I have no interest in going there. See, I'm good at saying no, right? I'm just giving some wild examples, but this is sure. if you watch your life, is what people do. Then you go in and you say, okay, well, I'm going to say yes to about a one. And that starts making you money. And then you go, well, I'm going to say yes to a two. And what I find is in most business owners or small businesses, people get to that two or three range, which means they're just saying yes to everything within a two or three range. So it means the activities that they're doing are producing where they're at in their life based on the money that they're making is doing about a two to three times return on that. Well, understand that you can keep going. <laughs> they stop because they go, well, I'm making 100 grand. 
Hey, I'm making 50 grand. I'm making 200 grand. You fill in the number and they go, see, I'm already doing that. Yes, you are. But the reason why you're staying where you are, and if you look at this, plus or minus almost every business out there in real estate, not in real estate, stays within where they're at year after year. Unless the market goes up or market goes down, they may flow with that, but they stay plus or minus 10%. You can just go pull up your, even in your MLS and see that, right? And they go, why? Well, the why is because you're saying yes to the same things over and over again that are producing the same result. So in order to break that, and it's also what happens is, this is why I bring up money, Look, when you're not making any money, it's easy to start saying yes to things because everything starts bringing you money. But then you get to some preferred level of income. I'm not saying you want to stay there, but you get to a preferred level of income and then you wrap your arms around it. It's like nobody touched this. I'm making my 100 grand, my 500 grand, my million, my 25 grand. You fill in the number. They hold on to it, right? They hold on to it real tight and they go, nobody disrupt this. So then they're afraid of saying yes to something that could disrupt their current income versus understanding that Look, the only way you're going to get past your current level of income is that you say yes to something that you haven't been saying yes to because you've been saying yes to know how many time to do anything else. So that means you have to take what you're doing now and take 50% of that and say no to it to make room, cognitive space, and activity space to then advance your business to the next level. Also, advance your spiritual level, advance your physical level, advance mm. your relationship level. You always have to start saying no to something to get to the next level. Hey, Masters, listen, we're going to get you right back to the show. I appreciate you. Just want to tell you about our sponsors, Vulcan 7. Listen, they've been supporting us for a long time. Tremendous service they offer with for sale by owners, expired data. They've got a built-in system with your dialer, your calendar system, which will send you reminders. You can use it as a CRM. Everything you need to be successful with for sale by owners and expired, as well as they have their own training weekly calls, webinars, every, like I said, everything you need to be successful, Vulcan7.com forward slash path to mastery. Right now as a listener to path to mastery is a special, you can get their system, try out everything guys, full suite, two weeks for only $49. I don't know how you beat that. If after two weeks, you're like, wow, this isn't the best thing I've ever used, then you cancel. And clearly you have all the information you've downloaded. So you have all that data. You can't go wrong. Check them out. It's tremendous. Another opportunity for you is a free a book, my friends, an audible book. I don't know who doesn't love a free book, right? So here's a great opportunity for you. Gary Keller's book, The One Thing, a tremendous book. It's helped me with focus and being able to focus on one thing and saying no to all the other things that are not in alignment with my top priority. So check out the one thing. Just go to davidsfreebook.com. Again, davidsfreebook.com to get yourself a free book on Audible. And again, absolutely free. And finally, we have a brand new Facebook group. It's called Path to Mastery, right? What else would it be called? Just join our group. All you need to do is request access. I will get you in to the group. It's where I share all kinds of value. These podcasts are actually released early there. There's extra information in there regarding the podcast. I do a weekly webinar. I can't tell you I do it every week, but we do <laughs> we do training. So just, just a lot of value. My goal is to bring as much value as possible to the members of that group. So just join. All you need to do is go to Facebook and then search Path to Mastery and request access. We'll get you right into the group. My friends, listen, I appreciate it. And don't forget about Vulcan 7. Just go to Vulcan7.com forward slash Path to Mastery. My friends, enjoy the rest of the show. You know, one of the things like you really pushing me to do that Ironman race, I know when, when I originally joined Project U, <laughs> I picked the high intensity interval yeah. training and you guys kind of coerced me into doing it. And there were so many times that I thought I was going to, I just can't do this. I mean, it was yeah. such a challenge, man. But then to actually complete it, what a breakthrough moment. And I think that has spread to so many other areas of my life, right? And I think for everybody listening, there's so many things that, like you talked about making $100,000. If we're making $100,000, the average person's going to keep themselves in a place that that's the most they're going to make. Mm -hmm. So even if you potentially want to make more, could make more, you may not realize that you're doing things that are going to keep you at that comfortable 100000 Is that accurate? Mm -hmm. I see it all the time. I, here's a yeah. perfect example of, of an agent. He had a, a photographer go into the listing. So he was going to meet the photographer and he does all his listings because mm -hmm. he wants to be there with the photographer. I'm like, but 
that's the photographer. Like you're paying yeah. the photographer. Why do you need to be there? Oh, I want to make sure. Then why even hire the photographer? Just go take the pictures yourself and yeah. charge the seller 200 bucks. That's like the perfect example of time. It's like that two hours, you could be doing something better with that. Right? Yeah, 100%. So what I always tell people is where to start, where to take something tactical away from this is start saying no to things that you know you're going to say no to. Right, stuff that you're already saying yes to. You know, like somebody's like, "Hey, Dave, what are you doing on Saturday night?" Oh, I don't really know. They want to go to dinner. I sure. And then you know, when you just said sure, you know that like you're not going to go. So then you spend all week stressing about how you're going to get out of it, right? And then on Friday, you finally email them, or Saturday morning, and it gets even worse. Instead of just saying, "You know, I can't make it this week," or it's just, "You know what? There's something else that's a priority." People aren't going to care, right? It's you stop thinking so much in your yeah, head and just sa- right? Saturday it's- night though is not. I don't think Saturday nights a, like that should be time off. You're going to go on a date night or something. But let's talk about the person that is going to go stand with the photographer for two hours. Like in their mind, they're doing the right thing, right? To them, that makes sense. It's awareness, right? It's awareness around where their time is going. Whenever I kind of teach time segment on this, I say, you know what I want you to do next week. Whatever you do typically in a week, cut it by 50%. Just go cut it. Cut every single meeting, cut every single thing you do by 50% and go see what happens. And literally, overwhelmingly, if people actually go do the exercise, they come back and they go, maybe they find 50% more time to be like, man, I, did, I just found 10 hours in my week, right? I just found 12 more hours in this whole thing. Just go do that for a week. If you don't want to do it after a week, go back to doing what you're doing, but just go cut it out for one week. Albert just walked in. He said he's got a question for you, man. So we're going to let him be a special guest on the podcast. What's your question? How's it going? Hey, man. How are you? Well, I just think that you are um, you're amazing. Really, I don't have a question. I just think you are. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I, know. I <laughs> Thank finally you. started working with David. Awesome. Well, congratulations. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, hey, thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah. I thought you had something a little more profound than that, but that's good. Man. <laughs> it's, all, it's all good, dude. All right, good. So, I mean, I, I want, listen, you have a podcast. Let's talk about your podcast. You're also starting some coaching. Let's talk a little bit about your podcast. Why should people be listening to the podcast? What's the essence? You know, we've been, we've been really kind of blessed in four months since we launched it to you know, performing in like the top echelon of all Apple podcasts. And we're in 32 countries now with it, which is really, really cool. And I think it's just really, for me, the podcast is a little bit self-indexing because it allows me to work on my own journey. And I believe that business is this conduit for personal growth. Business is my vehicle to uncover who I am, to go through the depth of experiences, understand why I'm here why we're doing. And this happens to be through business, right? And personal growth can mean, hey, maybe you you pick your first book up. Maybe you go for your first 5K. It can also mean going very deep into asking some very deep questions, which is what we really get into in business. The yearning conversation that people have. I used this earlier with somebody when I was doing an interview. I said, a lot of people feel that they're living a fraudulent life. And I don't mean fraudulent that they are doing something wrong. They just feel like there's something more they should be doing. And it's like that yearning for authenticity in their life. Let's just demystify what spirituality means, by the way. It just means that there's something just at the top level. It just means that there's something larger than you, that life is not about you and it's not personalized, right? And so people understand that. Most people can understand that. And then they say, okay, well, I don't want to go sit in a cave to get spiritual. Neither do I. I actually want to go build a business to do it. So why don't we combine two of these things of understanding that you can actually mirror both of them together so that every day in business is an opportunity to let go of what you think is right, to let go of your preferences. And that's the, that's the essence of how do you live your life every day, but still be spiritual? How do you deal with your kid who knocked over three Cheerio boxes in the supermarket and be like, oh, I love you so much. No, you're annoyed. How do you deal with that, right? You have an employee that leaves or sues you, mm-hmm. you know, like how do you deal with that, right? Like instead of just freaking out. So that's what the whole echelon of the conversation is. How do you use everything you're going through to uncover who you are? to really understand the depth of your being while doing and building and enjoying it. And at the basic level, people are trying to be okay. And just what I mean by that is love, joy, and enthusiasm are all inner states, right? They're all inner states. And people are then going, okay, I know these are inward states. I know they're here, but I'm going to go outside and get them. I'm going to go get them through a car. I'm going to go get them through a house. I'm going to go get them through making more money. I'm going to go get them through a job spirituality or business meets spirituality isn't about changing what you're doing. It changes what part of you is doing it and why you're doing it. 
if you're doing something in business to go out there to try to make yourself feel better, you're not ever going to win that game. But if you do something because you have so much joy and enthusiasm in there to go create, to build, and to experience the depth of business of all the challenges that come up there that are events, then you do it from a different place. And the funny thing is, this is what I said earlier, the funny thing is, is once you actually embrace this in terms of the experiences with it, you actually start to get more business. You start to get more money. You start mm. to get the things that you're looking for, but then you no longer need them. That's the funny thing because you're already whole and complete. It's like going outside and hammering on a rock looking for water. That's what people are doing their entire life is they're looking outside for something that's actually already inside. And so then people wake up and they go, well, why? Why am I doing this? You may know this if you're listening to this, if you haven't turned it off, then you're somewhat interested in this at this point. It's because, I mean, we could go all tactical, but I love going this deep with people just to start putting some awareness in them. People get caught up in this linear life. Like they think they need to grow, grow, grow. And the next thing, the next thing, next thing, next thing, next thing, next thing, next thing. Graduate, I need more jobs. I need a better house. I need a better dog. I need to get more kids. I need more money. All of these things kind of go on. Until one day you wake up and you understand that there's a little dissatisfaction in your life. That there's something that's missing. And what's happened was your mind is addicted to thinking. <laughs> I don't want to lose anybody, but th just understand this for a second. If you can just hear this for a second. When... Thoughts themselves have no energy. Thoughts are just thoughts. If you can understand that you are not your thoughts, like when you look in the mirror, you understand that you're, you're looking at the subject. Well, who's looking at you, right? You are the subject-object relationship, so you know you're not your body. I mean, you could take your arm off, right? If something happened and you took your arm off or your leg off or both legs off, are you still you? And you go, yes, I am. So you know you're not your body, right? Then you know you're not your thinking. If you're your thinking, how many people have thoughts even in the last 15 seconds? Well, did that thought come and go? Yes, it did. Well, then you know you're not your thoughts, right? Mm -hmm. Another thought probably came in just as fast as the other thought went away, sure. but the thought went away still, right? It just went away. So you know you're not your thoughts. So then you back up and say, well, then who am I? You are the witness, right, who's witnessing all this. But here's what happens. People wake up and they go, okay, from an early stage, they're trained to take when a thought starts to arise you take this consciousness, this life, this power, whatever, whatever makes sense for you in your words, that like when I say, hey, David, move your toes or like feel the back of your back, you can feel it, not like physically touching it. You can feel your consciousness going through there. So what happens is, is a thought is like a treadmill. It's just idle until it's plugged in. But once it's plugged in, it goes. And so a thought arises and then all of a sudden, you take this consciousness, this power, and you give the thought the power of life because that's what you are. You give it that. And then what happens is, is when, when you start giving it this power of thought, your mind goes, okay, I got what I need to do. I need to go out there now and I need to go and make more money because as soon as I make more money, I'm going to feel better. And it's true you do for a second, right? When you go out there and you start making more money, you go, see, I told you. What happens is the reason why you feel better is because when your mind gets what it wants, because it's telling you what it wants, telling you what it don't want and what it does want. When it gets what it wants, it actually doesn't know what to do with itself. So it almost suspends itself for a second. As it suspends itself, your consciousness then goes to what's right next door, which is your energy, which is you and your life. That's why you feel this rush of energy. Like if all of a sudden you put three deals on a contract in a day, when you walk home, you go, man, that was an amazing day. I feel amazing, right? Versus if you come in there and you have three deals fall apart, you go, man, is this you've either closed off energy or opened it up. We've asked our mind to go out there and say, hey, mind, go out there and manipulate the external world to open up so that I feel okay when I get what I want. But then how does that work for your life? You just got to stop and ask yourself, why do I need to go outside to feel the states that are inside? Why can't I just go play checkmate and go right inside? And that's the whole essence of the podcast is how do you take all of that and incorporate that into a business world where you can go out and create and make money and still enjoy the form things, have a Lambo if you want, have the lake house or don't have it. That doesn't matter to sure. me or you, right? And enjoy that part. That's good, man. That's a lot. And I, I think our listeners, you know, if you're listening to this, I would go check out the podcast. I know you go a lot deeper on that stuff. Um, there's a lot there, man. Well, David, what have you there. learned? I mean, you've been part of Project You, right? What have you learned on the spiritual side mm -hmm. from like really not understanding what that is to where you are today? Because you've changed dramatically. The thing I've realized more than anything else is there was a lot more that I was capable of doing than I was doing, right? And I think that has come as a result of 
the race and um, also the the meditation has helped me tremendously with and it, and again you know I'm, I'm not close to perfect I caught myself dropping an f bomb in a <laughs> meeting yesterday you know but it listen for ninety percent of the time it's good and and um, it's been a tremendous journey that's all I can tell you I I, I could spend an hour on this I'm not going to do that <laughs> I'm just going to tell you it's been tremendous my thinking I deserve more uh, I know I'm capable of doing more I shortchanged myself. The last 10 years of my life, man, I, you know what I mean? And, and I just feel like I'm more powerful of a person yeah. now. And it's just as a result of doing these things, man, yeah. I would encourage everybody to get involved and do something that you think, like Albert, that you just saw, he signed up for a sprint. He's doing nice. a sprint in two weeks, right? He's looking at his first half Ironman because I want him to get the same experience. And it starts there and then it, it ends up in so many different areas. So I appreciate that. I got a question for you. Listen, I've been meaning to ask you this. And I keep forgetting, there was a, a playoff game with the Pittsburgh Steelers, which is your team, played the Buffalo Bills, uh, which is my old school team, man. And I remember I asked you a few days later, did you watch the game? And you're like, no, I went to bed. Now, I watched the game. I stayed up till 1130. It threw my whole workout off. Every, you know, How do you go to – like, if that's your team, yeah. how do you go to bed, man? How are you that disciplined? Well, it's just you prioritize what matters most. And to me, health matters more than anything. And so when you understand the people and things that matter the most matter more than anything else, your decisions become easy. I should say that again. When, when you understand really what matters the most, the decisions in your life become very easy. So to me, health becomes the most important thing because I don't have my energy and my health. I can't take care of anybody else. So then I literally just make decisions on that priority first. And people can say, well, you can enjoy your life one time. I enjoy yeah. going to bed early. Like I enjoy getting up in the morning more than I do watching the sports team. Now, there was a time in my life that I didn't, but through all the work that I've done on myself, I'm just very clear on what matters. And once you get very clear, again, I say the decisions actually fall into place. You don't even think about them anymore. Mm. It's like it, most people are living this life where that the, you know, the people that know them the least like them the most. And the people that know them the most like them the least because they're living this kind of falsified life of trying to project something out there. Instead of being true to themselves and really just following what matters the most. So if health matters the most, not your priority. And if you want to have a cheat meal, that's fine. Put it in there. If you want to have a stay up late one day, that's fine. But on Sundays, I can't do that. It's everything. Like, just like you said, everything's thrown off. Then I'm gone for the whole rest of the day because I'm worrying about trying to get my workout in. I'm, I'm, I'm not the right person. So then everything gets thrown off. So my understanding then, and, and I hope I'm clear, and you tell me if I'm not, is the fact that watching that game was not enough of an interest or a cheat meal for you to do that to stay up. Yeah, there's, is that, is that yeah, accurate? Or? 100%. There's nothing externally that's going to get me to move on things that matter more to me. No money, no football but, game. But if you if you missed one workout, that's not going to kill you. That's not going to throw you off your health. I mean, you no, it's not. But here's the thing: they're all small pebbles. It's really it's all small pebbles. Are dude. you extreme, man? Are you just super extreme? Is that your thing, man? You know, Hallie's the one said she's like, man, we were going to the airport. She's like, you're the most disciplined person I've ever met in my entire life. And I said, that's probably not true. Bruce Lee was definitely a lot more disciplined than I was. There's a lot more people that are there. Bruce I just Lee. got so clear <laughs> on what matters to me. And I just don't let the external world dictate my life. And I'm not saying watching a game dictates your life. That's your, if that's what you want to do, if that's more important to you, then awesome. Nobody's judging that, yeah. right? You just have to, for you, not for the team, not for your, your friends, not for your, anybody else, right? You have to determine what life you want to live and what matters the most. For me at this point, it's true liberation, which means that I can go through life no matter what happens and I'm never disturbed. So that's, I literally, that's the essence of everything that I'm doing in business right now is so that you can literally have full freedom. People get into business for freedom. They get financial freedom. Those are great, right? Those are great things. But man, what would it be like, David, to be able to walk around the world where no event bothered you? Nothing, nothing could bother you. Not even death, nothing. How free would you be? How much joy would you experience? Which is what everybody's after in the other aspect of the world instead of just going to the one place and playing checkmate. Yeah, amen. What you said about the game actually kind of is the same as what we said earlier about time. When somebody says, hey, I don't have time for that right now, is essentially what they're saying is that's not important enough for me. 
And if it was, then I would make the time, right? Because we all have this time. Everybody has, you don't have any control of time. To me now, I'm understanding for you, it just wasn't important enough to stay up and watch that game. If it was, you would have done that, Yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. I mean, everybody gets what they think is the most important. If to you, most important is being able to watch TV at the end of your day, then that's it. If most important, you want to go and think about how a drug addict gets drugs. They don't have anything. They find a way to get it. We're so resourceful human beings when we actually turn our resourcefulness to stuff that Mm. we really want. And for me, I just think most people are going around their life not even knowing what they want, and they're allowing other people to dictate what they should or shouldn't do instead of actually taking control of their own life through tools that we use like future selves and those type of things to make decisions a lot easier for you. Like me, I, I'm not going to, I don't want to beat myself up because I stayed up and watched the game. That was a choice I made. Mm-hmm. To me, that was important. Yeah, I, yeah. And for you, it wasn't. And this is, I don't want to get too far up because we're going to, we can end up going into the hour, but I actually found myself comparing myself to you. Saying, well, geez, how come Adam goes to sleep? I didn't know. You know what I mean? And I, and we can't do that. It's Probably exactly the joy what you're talking about. We're all on our own journey and, and we just have to be, uh, I don't know what word I'm looking for, but you know, just at peace with where we are and Absolutely. our choices and our decisions. Dude, let's wrap this up, man. What do you want people to take from this? I know we've had a few different conversations. What should people be taking from this conversation today? I think if anything, they should just stop and be curious about their life in business and personal and your relationships. Just stop and assess yourself. Stop being on the grind of the hamster wheel. There's times that I understand you have to grind business and grind in sports and different things. I mean, just really just ask yourself some deep questions and not being afraid of the answer. Am I living the most impactful life? You kind of said this when I asked you about it. Yeah, I'm capable of so much more. But it took time to stop and ask different questions. So just say, hey, am I living a 10 relationship with my partner? Am I giving it my all? What about my physical life? What does it really mean to me? What am I in business life? What do I really want out of this? Am I walking around actually enjoy or am I disturbed all the time? Why am I disturbed? Just plant some questions and telling you that's all the technique that you ever need. Because if you really explore the question, it'll take you to exactly where you want to go. Awesome, man. How do people get in touch with you or what's the best way to? Yeah, adamhergenrother.com has all of our resources, a ton of free resources. You know, obviously our podcast is there. It's a free resource for everybody. We have different wealth building toolkits on there as well too. We also have launched kind of our coaching, conscious coaching programs for one-on-one and group coaching inside and outside of different businesses. So that's obviously an opportunity there, but just go connect with adamherdemuffer.com and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Awesome, man. Well, listen, I appreciate you. I'll add links to all your, cool. to your websites, your podcasts, everything to our show notes. And uh, again, man, just appreciate you and uh, look forward to seeing you a couple of weeks. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, Thanks for putting the energy to, to bring knowledge to people. It means a lot. Thank you, my friend. Masters, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening to this episode. You know, I get it. You're ready to move on. And real quick, before you do, a couple opportunities for you. First off, I just want to, if you could give me a review, it helps tremendously for rankings as well as helping us get better guests, everything. It's just awesome. So if you could, wherever you listen to podcasts, if you're on iTunes, that's amazing. If you're using Android, wherever you listen, be phenomenal i just really say i appreciate that i just launched a brand new facebook group it's really excited to to get this thing going the uh, goal is every day bring inspirational stuff videos stuff that's not going to be accessible to everybody certain trainings opportunities webinars everything so it's a free group guys just go to path to mastery Uh, Search Path to Mastery on Facebook. You'll find a group. Request access, and I will get you in right away. I promise you. And books. I I, gosh, I talk about free books all the time. You you probably already heard me talk about free books a million times. And I know everybody loves a free book. So just go to davidsfreebook.com on Audible. uh, Right. Go to David's Free Book. Get yourself a copy of any of the authors that we've interviewed. I mean, why not get a free book? Uh, It's free. It's amazing. Uh, davidsfreebook.com and again I just want to say thanks and as you know health and nutrition has always been number one for me just completed my first Ironman guys Lake Placid 70.3 in the books Uh, goal was break 7 hours did it 6.49 next year I'm breaking 6 hours guaranteed I'm happy I did my first one I cruised through I followed my coach's plan and cruised through and next year I'm going all in anyway 
The reason I'm sharing that is because I've, I'm on AdvoCare products. I've been taking them for a long time. Uh, tremendous health and nutrition products. If you're interested in learning about the products, go to LiveLongerSmarter.com. LiveLongerSmarter.com. You can check out the products for energy, protein, health, nutrition, vitamins, anything you need is there. My friends, thank you. Uh, and then please give us a review. You absolutely rock. And I look forward to connecting with you on the next episode. And if you need anything from me, shoot me an email, david at davidihill.com. Or if you like, call me, 774-314-1107. Thank you.